Okay, so this right here is Xiaomi's brand new Mi A2, a smartphone that has taken the immense value that was the Mi A1 last year and stretched it even further. Let's get it open. So, I spent the last few days playing around with the Xiaomi Mi A2, and to give you an idea of how much I like it, if someone had just handed me the phone without giving me a price tag, I would have said this feels like a really solid 400 euro phone. It's actually 249. There are a lot of cool things going on here, and a lot of the big improvements since the last generation come from the camera. On the back, we've got a 12 megapixel plus 20 megapixel arrangement, and the main camera sensor has had a nice upgrade since the Mi A1, which was already, I'd say, the best phone camera at the price. In fact, this time round, the A2 comes dangerously close to the OnePlus 6 dual camera. Photos are really punchy and detailed, and the HDR mode kicks in pretty much when you need it, enabling it to cope fairly well, even in challenging lighting. And I really dig the portrait mode. As it is a budget phone, you sort of go in expecting one thing, but you actually get something quite different. What's even cooler is that in low light, you can switch to using the secondary 20 megapixel lens, which has a neat trick up its sleeve. It uses pixel binning to fuse four smaller pixels into one large noise-free pixel, effectively scaling its 20 megapixel sensor into a five megapixel image, which is then upscaled back to 20 megapixel. While that does sound confusing, and to the few of you that actually followed that, probably pointless too, the results speak for themselves. In low light, it is noticeably sharper than photos from the primary lens, and is even within a stone's throw from the camera on the Vivo Nex S, an $800 phone. The front 20 megapixel camera also benefits from the same tech, and is actually one of the surprise highlights here. It uses Xiaomi's new Beauty Engine 4.0 for even more intricate face embellishment. And it's a feature that I don't hate when it's on its lighter settings. And there are even more options to make yourself beautiful than ever before. But you can always turn it off if you don't like it. An unfortunate spin-off of this is abnormally high exposure, which makes it lose some points versus a phone like the Google Pixel 2. But the A2 does have a lot going for it, including front-facing flash and convincing portrait mode using that single lens. So the camera overall gets a big thumbs up, and I'm happy to say the good news doesn't end there. Whilst Xiaomi have been using the Snapdragon 625 for some time now to power their mid-range devices, this time they've stepped it up with the pretty new Snapdragon 660 and 4GB of RAM on a 99% stock Android 8.1, it's a really quick phone. It doesn't have quite that same instantaneous snappiness you might find on the OnePlus 6, but for this price, it'd be tough to point you to a faster feeling phone. Compared to Qualcomm's 800 series flagship chips, you miss out on a chunk of graphics performance. But I have tried games like PUBG on high settings, Darkness Rises, and it is 30 frames per second solid. So if this isn't the first video you've watched on the device, you might already know that this is an Android One phone. What does that mean? Android One is essentially a guarantee from Google that you're getting a solid and stable version of Android, free from bloatware and malware. I've also been told that an Android P update is on the way, but there's no date on that, so I'd expect a couple of months at least. In terms of just the general look and feel, it's worth clarifying something first. Xiaomi has three main tiers of phones, the budget Redmi devices, mid-range Mi A devices, and then their flagship Mi devices. Whilst the glass construction is saved for the highest tier, the Mi A2 does benefit from a smooth metal finish, fairly well disguised antenna bands, and a curved back for the first time. As a point of comparison, this basically feels like a slightly heavier OnePlus 5T. It's actually the exact same thickness, just a couple of grams more. While I would say the curve is palm flattering, it does create a very real, table wobble situation, which kind of gets on my nerves because I often use the phone next to my laptop when it is lying flat. 
and this issue doesn't make it easy. The speaker on the bottom handles voices pretty well, but it is a little lacking in bass. It's clear though. Now, as a smartphone that barely hits the 250 euro mark, it's not like there are no compromises. You don't get wireless charging, IP certification, a headphone jack, and the base model will only get you 32 gigabytes of storage with no SD card. The fingerprint scanner is great, but there is a noticeable delay between detection of your print and the screen actually turning on. And there are also a couple of primary aspects of the phone that I really don't love. Number one being the display, which is one of the less impressive parts of the Mi A2. It's a 5.99 inch 1080p LCD panel. You do get the sort of modern rounded corners, but I kind of feel like they've taken this a bit far. My personal opinion is that the curves on the display and the body together make it look like a bit of a toy from the front. It's a bang on average screen, robust, but with an unglamorous color profile, okay contrast, and viewing angles that are good for about 165 degrees, after which the phone becomes, well, less good. The other thing is the battery, which is very mid-range. You've got 3000 milliamp hours of capacity and 10 watt charging. So you're looking at about a two hour charge time that'll get you about five and a half hours of pretty heavy screen on time. And I mean, it's solid. The battery life is good enough that you won't be worried about it, but at the same time, not good enough that you'll be impressed or surprised by it. Okay, so here's the verdict. Two of my biggest complaints with the phone are still areas that it is average in for the price. And it's only because the camera and the performance are so good that these seem like flaws in comparison. Compared to a flagship phone, you'll miss the little things like the lack of storage, like the lack of water resistance, but the fundamentals on the Mi A2 are surprisingly close. Thanks a lot for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys next time.